and I'm actually from Sonoma State University uh, in Rock Park, and I'm going to talk to you guys about cultural commitment, uh, sorry, cumulativeness and non-human writing, suggesting cultural, cultural capability. Okay, so first let's talk about what cumulativeness is. Cumulativeness is basically when newer cultural practices are built upon older ones. So what that means is that there needs to be a foundation of a uh, basically transmission of either improved or more efficient techniques being passed down through imitation, essentially. And I'm also going to talk about basically what is culture in this context. Culture can be described in so many different ways, as many anthropology majors know. It depends on your public. So I actually took it from a human perspective in infant studies by M. Day, and uh, they are more temporary, or they're more than temporary, and they're transmitted across generations. And then in Perry's paper, which is actually talking about cultural primatology, which is a whole new field, uh, they're talking about behavioral variation that is formed through social learning processes. So some of that can be uh, social learning can be described as changes in behavior that result from attending to behavior or behavioral products of another individual, such as imitation. So I'm going to talk about tool use of chimpanzees, mostly in the arts of ant creation. So what they actually found is there were a couple of different populations that they that they looked at mostly. And they looked at a few different species of ants that these chimps would actually be preying on. And basically what was happening is some of these ants were faster and some were slower. So theoretically you would think that they'd be using tools that were longer for the faster ones so they could eat them off the sticks before they climbed on their arms and started biting them. And that for the slow ones they may not care as much and just use small sticks or reach their hands in. But they actually found in this particular case that it didn't necessarily matter how fast the ants were overall. Some uh, of the populations, uh, of the groups essentially, were using techniques of using shorter sticks or medium sized sticks for fast ants, even though it didn't really make much ecological sense. So that's kind of an interesting fact. And in Pangenistus, which is also known as bonobo, which is a newer species that was found because a lot of people just lump them in with chimpanzees, unfortunately. Um, According to the World Wildlife Foundation, there's actually less than 100,000 of them, so that's a little scary. Uh, they actually been found to use rain hats in some populations, and in other ones, they've been found to cover themselves with sticks and mud, essentially, to protect themselves from rain and weather, wet weather, essentially, during the rainy season. And they don't really know why some use rain hats and some use sticks and dirt, essentially, to cover themselves. Uh, they've also found, though, that they do different river wading styles in different areas to get different things for foraging out of the river for like algae, bugs, things like that. So what they found is some of them actually use quadrupedal and some of them use bipedal. There isn't enough evidence, unfortunately, to support if this is cultural versus ecological. So they're hoping to find that out through more research because it could actually be that the prey that they're going for might be better suited either for bipedal so there's less of them in the water to show that they're there, or for water beetles as far as just being in the water to grab it as it comes by. So what I found in my research is that not all variations of behavior are ecologically based, meaning that they're not completely adaptive to their environment around them. So what this means in regards to them is that they're actually passing on techniques that are not more efficient necessarily, but just techniques that they know or have seen around them and are imitating. They believe, though, that some of these are based off of previous ecological factors that may have pre-existed that we don't have now, and that this is passed down in a certain population, and that's maybe we see that in humans sometimes too. So. Uh, and also with chimpanzees, they have different nut cracking techniques, and what they found is they compared two that live right next to each other this time instead of just various parts of Africa. And these two populations essentially showed differing techniques, even though it, there was no real reason to. They thought that both populations would show techniques that would support basically the hardness of the nuts that they were actually cracking. So they would use hammers that are either made out of wood or made out of stone. They found that in both of these areas that there was no reason to pick one or the other based off of that logical differences. Essentially, both areas were almost identical with the differences being so minute it shouldn't make a difference. So 
what should have happened is they should have been using stone tools in the beginning and started waiting off and going to wood tools throughout the season because the hardness of nuts actually is that they're easier to crack essentially and wood tools are easier to find than the stone tools. But they found that some populations use stone all the way through the season no matter what, essentially. And some would actually switch and transition when it actually became a little bit more adaptive. Why is this actually an important thing to study? Well, they actually find that there are fewer divergences between some of these species of great apes than humans, which is kind of important to take into consideration when discussing captive primates in particular, and essentially the morality, morality of that and how we should actually be building that essentially. Um, they found that some apes actually have innovative techniques to actually do problem solving, which is kind of cool. So they found in orangutans, chimps, and gorillas in the study. They would give them different ta tasks that were hard to figure out. They would need to use tools to actually get the prize out, which is usually food. And some of them would use really efficient techniques for each particular one, figuring out a new way to do it more efficiently. And others would just use a technique that they liked and just kind of stick with that one all the way through. And it would sort of work, maybe, in a miss. But that was kind of interesting. So. Basically, you're finding that true mutation is not just human, and conformity is also not just human. And they're finding that brain-to-body ratio is potentially related to variation. However, they're finding that cognitive ability is not based off simply larger brain size, uh, as far as cultural techniques. And that cumulativeness is tied to social complexity versus uh, cognitive ability. some of the uh, practices that are being performed are either by, they're basically new females come into a group and they might adapt to what the majority practice already is, whether it's efficient or not. So they may already know a tactic that's actually more efficient, but they're choosing to conform to the group instead and take on that majority style. So what's interesting is they're finding it's more of a group transmission thing. And some of them might be traditions. So like, they might just be doing it anyway, even though it's less efficient, just because they've always been doing it that way. And the higher ranked female may not have figured out a new way of doing it versus because they're teaching it kind of to their kids because their kids are imitating them. But, but does that answer your question? Any other questions? All right. Thank you.